for this reason, we're just going to look from this point on at problems that have one solution between 0 and pi over 2. Again, a warning. If your calculator or Desmos is set to radians, the result of an inverse trig function will be an answer in radians. If your calculator or Desmos is set to degrees, the results of an inverse trig function will be in degrees. You have to pay attention. For example, if we find the inverse sine of 0.82, what we're saying is, what angle has a sine value of 0.82? And if we find that answer using the radian setting, let's see what we get. The inverse sine of 0.82 is 0.961. That's 0.961 radians. Now let's go into the wrench menu and switch that to degrees. And once we switch to degrees, we get 55.08. And we'll make sure to put a degrees symbol on that so we can tell the difference. For this reason, I do also write radians when my answer is in radians and I'm sure that my answer is in radians. A number without radians or degrees is assumed to be radians. So be careful that you actually know what you're doing. Now, when we want to solve a trig equation, we are going to isolate the most complicated part of the equation first and then do the inverse, just the same as we've done with every other function. So in this case, uh, this first one, solve 4 cosine x equals 1. We want to isolate the cosine x. Let's do that by dividing both sides of the equation by 4. So we have 4 cosine x over 4 equals 1 over 4, giving us cosine x equals 1 fourth. Now we'll take an inverse cosine on the left, making inverse cosine of cosine x, and we'll take an inverse cosine on the right, making inverse cosine of 1 fourth. Now simplifying on the left, we just have x because we've done the function with its inverse. On the right, we have inverse cosine of 1 fourth. Now calculating that in radians, we'll have x equals 1.318 radians, or moving to degrees, x equals 75.522 degrees. All right, for this next one, we're solving tangent t minus 0.75 equals 1.25. Again, we're going to start by isolating the trig function there. And so we're going to add 0.75 to both sides. So we're going to do tangent t minus 0 0.75 plus 0.75 equals 1.25 plus 0.75. That gives us tangent t equals 2. And now we can apply an inverse tangent to do inverse tangent of tangent t equals inverse tangent of 2. Simplifying, we'll have t equals inverse tangent of 2. Let's go ahead and do that calculation. First, I'm going to do this one in degrees because my calculator is already set for degrees. So we'll start with t equals 63.435 degrees. And then I'm going to shift it back to radians, which gives me uh, t value of 1.107 radians. So there is my answer in radians and degrees. So finally, I want you to try this. Two equations for you to solve. Write the answers in both radians and degrees. The first one, you want to solve 2 equals 5 sine x plus 1. The second one, solve cosine of parentheses x minus 0.25, close the parentheses, equals 0.9. Pause the video, give it a try, and then come back when you think you have an answer. All right, we're back. Let's start by solving 2 equals 5 sine x plus 1. I'm going to start by isolating the sine x before I do any kind of inverse. So I'm going to start by subtracting 1 from both sides. So I'll do 2 minus 1 on the left and 5 sine x plus 1 minus 1 on the right. 
On the left, I have one, and on the right, five sine x. Well, I'm still trying to isolate the sine x, so let's divide both sides by five. Now I'll have one divided by five on the left and five sine x divided by five on the right, giving me one fifth equals sine x. Now I'm in the perfect position to do the inverse on both sides. I'm going to do inverse sine of one fifth on the left and inverse sine of sine x on the right. That simplifies to just x on the right because we did a function composed with its inverse. And so I just need to calculate inverse sine of one fifth. Let's go ahead and do that. The inverse sine of one fifth in radians is going to be 0 0.201. And then switching to degrees, I have 11.537 rounding there degrees. So two answers there, depending on whether I have radians or degrees. Okay, the final one, solve cosine of left parentheses x minus 0.25 right parentheses equals 0.9. Now notice that I do have the trig function isolated. It has some stuff inside of it, but it is isolated without anything added, subtracted, or multiplied from it. So I am going to go ahead and take the inverse right here. I'm going to do inverse cosine of cosine of x minus 0.25. And then on the other side, I'm also going to do inverse cosine of 0.9. Now, taking the cosine composed with the inverse cosine removes the cosine parts, leaving me with x minus 0.25 equals inverse cosine of 0.9. And so here, what I need to do is uh, remember that the, the 0.25 will get added to the other side when I solve for x. So I'm going to add 0.25 to both sides. So x minus 0.25 plus 0.25 equals inverse cosine, which is just a number, of 0.9 plus 0.25. Simplifying, we get x on the left equals inverse cosine of 0.9 plus 0.25. Now, I am going to work this out in both degrees and radians, but I will tell you that only one of these can possibly be right. And which one is correct really depends on whether this 0.25 is written in degrees or radians. And that would depend on the context of the problem. If 0.25 was written in degrees, then our answer would come out in degrees. If 0.25 was written in radians, then our answer would come out in radians. And that's because that 0.25 is applying directly to the angle. So it really does matter in this case what the context is. So I'm going to go ahead and find both answers because I told you to do it. So let's go ahead and find it, starting with inverse cosine of 0.9 plus 0.25 in degrees, which is going to be 26.092. And then switching back to radians, I would have 0 0.701 radians. And again, I'm just going to make a little note here that this answer at the end depends on whether 0.25 was in degrees or radians at the beginning. It needs to be the matching one. Okay, that didn't affect us in the other problems because we weren't adding or subtracting directly from the angle in the other problems we are subtracting or adding from the function in the other problems. And when we do that, we're only affecting y values, not x values. Remember, our x values are actually the angle values. All right, well, hopefully you can now solve some trig equations on your own.